everyone, it's Keely from Soy and Shea and thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to start making the winter frost soap. Now even though we celebrate uh, Christmas in summer here in Australia, I still remember having cold Christmases when I grew up in the UK, so I like to have something that has that sort of icy coolness effect to it. So today I am going to start off by making some embeds for this soap. I'm going to be making some soap that I can shred up and then put into the main batter. The fragrance I'm using, I've already poured it into my oils here. It has notes of spearmint and leafy greens. It has floral notes of jasmine, rosewood and gardenia. And it's all on a base of vetiver, applewood and lily of the valley. And it, to me, it smells like a really crisp apple rose sort of fragrance. It's really nice. I did use it last year as well and it sold very well. So as I said, I already have my fragrance in my oils and I'm also going to add my mica in here as well. I'm using Cool Vista from My Micro Obsession and I'm putting it in here now because all I'm going to do is so, um, pour a solid block of soap and then tomorrow I will be grating it up and using that in the main soap batter. So we'll get to mixing this up. Okay, so that is all nicely incorporated and emulsified and it's now time to pour it into my loaf mold. These loaf molds you can actually buy from off of eBay and Amazon and I find them really good for doing little bits of project like this. So I'm just going to pour the whole lot in, scrape it out and as I said leave it overnight and we'll come back tomorrow and shred it for the main soap. The soap set up nicely overnight. I did get a little bit of soda ash, but that's okay because it, you're not going to notice once it's in the main soap here. I've taken it out the mould and cut it up into more manageable size pieces. And then I'm just using my grater here to slice it up into little shreds. And this grater is solely for the soap room. I'm slicing onto this bit of paper so I can then leave it out just to dry off a little bit so it's not too tacky so it actually spreads throughout the soap. So I'm just going to leave this to dry out just a little bit on the paper so I can get it to start to sort of separate out a little bit and then we'll get to making the main base of this soap. It's now time to make the base of this winter frost soap. I've got all of my oils melted down here and brought to room temperature. And in my little bucket here, I have my lye water solution. So I've put my sodium hydroxide into some distilled water and there's a little bit of tussar silk, which is melted into it as well. I'm going to pour it down my stick blender just to stop any splashback. And then I'm going to mix it up and pour it out for the colors. And we're going to be making a layered soap today. I'm going to mix up is going to be the base of my soap and I'm using some cool Vista mica and all of my micas are from my micro obsession so I'm just going to add some of that into this one and then for my other pot which I've only got a smaller amount I'm going to add in some silver lake mica so on the base of the soap I'm going to have this frosty looking blue this actually goes to quite a turquoise blue in the soap and then I'm going to put a thin layer of silver on the top. And then on the top of the soap, I'm going to have a white base with some of those soap shreds mixed through. Okay, so I've mixed that up a fair bit because I do want to pour this onto the bottom of the soap mold and I want it to set up so that I can pour the silver onto the top. I'm going to do something very naughty there just so I don't put the silver or the blue into the silver. I do recommend before scraping out the bottom of your blender to unplug or at least take the bottom off. So that's a do as I say, not as I do. Just gonna give that a bit more of a stir just to make sure we've got all of that mica off the edge of the jug and mix through. And this fragrance, I know it holds really well in soaps. It smells amazing. It's a really nice, crisp, clean fragrance. And it is suitable for all year round, not just for a frosty Christmas soap. So we'll get as much of that off the spatula and I'll just grab the mold. And I'm going to pour this one just straight in as a 
fairly straight layer in the bottom and I'm going to scrape this jug out because I don't want any of this left over. Right, so our blue is now in and while that's setting up, I will mix the silver and I'll put a little bit of fragrance oil in here as well. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to pour it into my slab mold and what I'm going to do is use my spatula just to break the fall of that silver on top of the blue because I don't want it to do a little drop swell so I'm pouring as low down as I can and then just letting that spatula break the fall and I'm really sorry I know you can't really see it um, if I put the camera on the other side of my soap table it is just too dark so I will, will next time try and pour it from the other hand I'm just going to get this bucket or, or this jug all scraped out and then we'll even it out across the top here. So I'll just use the spatula to do that. Just wiggle it out and then I'll give it a really gentle knock down just to make sure it's nice and even. So our silver layer is all now in there and I'm going to start working on the next bit here. So I, when I worked out how much soap batter I needed, I did take into consideration all of my soap scraps here. So I know that I need about 2.2 kilos of oil to do the soap design I want to do today. And I had um, 400 grams of soap oil to make these scraps, which came to about 600 grams. So I have in my bucket here, um, it was 1.8 um, kilograms of oil in here to get the, the correct size. So whenever you are using soap scraps, just remember to also take into account the weight of any of the shreds you're putting in. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to give this a mix just to loosen it back up because it's been sitting there. I'm going to pour in a little bit of water dispersible titanium dioxide, which I've diluted into some water, and that's distilled water. I'll just give it a quick blitz. And I'm going to add in my fragrance oil. Stir that in as well. And then I'm going to pour in my soap scraps. I think I am actually going to reserve a little bit of this white separately because I want to mound this on the top and make it look like a bit of a snow drift. So I don't want all of those scraps all the way to the top of this soap. So for now what I'm going to do is just pour a little bit of this off to go right on the top of the soap at the end. I can always pour more into the jug if I need it. And what I'm now going to do is pop in my soap scraps. And I'll give that a bit of a stir just to incorporate them. I'll throw some more in. Whenever I think of Christmas, I don't tend to think of your traditional red and green colours. I always think of those turquoises and the lilac and those real soft pastel colours. What colours do you guys think of for Christmas? But let me know down in the comments down below. Alright, I'm going to stop there because I think I may have more than enough soap scraps in here and I don't want it to actually be a blue soap with white bits in it so I'll just give that one more good stir just to make sure it's all in there and then I'm going to start pouring it into the mold okay that silver is looking like it is nicely set up so I'm just going to pour this in I will use the spatula because these soap scraps are quite heavy I'm just going to pour them straight in like that and then, as I said, this soap is going to mound up. I want a high top without actually piping this soap. So far, so good. This is the first time I've ever made a soap putting the, the shreds through it. So I'm really hoping this comes out as I do have it pictured in my mind. I know I usually, I say not to have them in your mind, but I kind of did have this one that 
I want these soap scraps and the layers and I want it mounded and so far it is actually working, so. actually just going to give this a little bit of a spritz with some alcohol so that when I put the next layer on it will help with bonding it together. What I'm going to do is just give this bit, oh in fact I don't need to, it's thickening up quite nicely. One of the things with this fragrance oil I'm using which is White Christmas from Aroma, it, it behaves really well. It does thicken up after a little while but it actually does behave really well as a soap fragrance. It doesn't thin out trace, but it also doesn't move too fast. So I'm just gonna give it a quick little blitz because I want it just that little bit thicker. All right, and then we'll get this cleaned off. And then I'm going to just pile it onto the top and hopefully make it look like a little bit of a snow drift. All right, so we'll grab our mold back here. And I am now just gonna start piling this gently on the top here. Okay, so we have all of that white now out and I'm just going to use a stainless steel spoon just to move the soap around, just to try and get the the top kind of as level as it is, so I don't end up with one bar weighing a good 50 grams more than another one. So, and I'm also just going to put a few little divots in there just to really make it look like fresh snow that's fallen. I'm also just trying to hide some of those blue bits that have come to the top. I've got a little bit much down here, so I'll push some of that down there. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to stop playing with that now so we can start getting some of our embeds on here that we've been working on. So the first thing I'm going to do on the top of here, I've got my Blizzard Mica from My Mica Obsession and I'm just going to give that a really good spritz over the top so it looks really nice and glittery. Or glitter, glittery, I should say, because I don't think glittery is a word. Right, so we've got that on there, and that's looking really nice. I'll just clear these out of the way for now, and I will leave it that way. What I have over here, I have some melt and pour embeds. So for this soap, I have got some, you can't really see that on my blue gloves let me move my fingers out of the way we've got some little snowflakes and I've made these using some of the clear no sweat Stevenson's melt and pour and I used some liquid colorants for these when you use liquid colorants in your melt and pour you get that really nice clear see-through look and I also added just a little little bit of biodegradable glitter into the mix as well so they've got just a slight little shine to them and all I'm going to do is pop a little snowflake on the one side of each of every one of these bars and then I have these little balls so these are also made with the melt and pour I actually did use the white one and I put some blizzard mica in there and I'm going to pop three of them onto the side just to make them look like a little mound of um, snowballs that someone may be playing with. So we'll pop those on there like that. So I'm going to keep popping these on here and then I will come back and we have just a little bit extra to go on the top once done. Okay, 
so all of those are now in and there's just one final little touch I have some salts which I have colored with a little bit of mica so all I do is into a bowl I put some of the mica that I want to use I add a little bit of rubbing alcohol now my chosen one is to use a hundred percent because I know that it will dry out really quick but you could use right down to 70% it just takes longer to dry and then I spread them out on a piece of paper and allow them to dry before I come in and I'm just going to sprinkle some of these over the top in between the snowflakes and possibly in between the little snowballs as well not too many just a few because I also have some that I've covered in some blizzard mica so I'll add just a few of those as well the blizzard mica ones I don't know if the camera will really pick it up but they're really nice and shiny and very pearlescent so I'm just going to sprinkle just a few of those over the top just to really pick those blue ones up and I think I just want a few more of the blue right down the very edges of this and then I will bring you down for a close look of winter frost okay I've also just decided before I bring you down I'm going to give it one more spritz of the blizzard mica just to really get those snowballs to pop and to get those um, snowflakes glistering as well and now I'll bring you down for a closer look okay so here is winter frost it is so pretty and shiny and I think the camera is picking up some of that blizzard mica there for you I'm going to leave it sit here for about 18 to 24 hours and then I'm going to come back and we'll have a look and see what the inside looks like so I am back to cut winter frost. It is smelling amazing and it is looking really pretty. I have popped this already onto the multibar cutter just so I could get it lined up and I was checking to make sure I could hopefully cut this one on the multibar and I'm just going to push straight down. I have caught just a couple of those snowballs but it's not going to be too bad there. And I probably should have laid it on its side so I don't drag those salts, but it's too late now. We're going through. I'm going to catch this end so it doesn't get damaged. And we're through. So let's have a look at what we've got on the inside. So this piece here off the end, that will become my little sample piece to go out. And this is the first one we have and I am really pleased with how that has come up in there with all those soap shreds. Right, so I'm just going to grab this next one for you. So I'm really pleased with how this one has turned out. I think the colours are just perfect for Christmas. These are the sort of colours I really, really like around Christmas time. I just find them to be so cooling and here in Australia because it just gets so hot. I like those really cool Christmas colours so it doesn't feel so warm. I hope you've enjoyed watching me make my winter frost soap. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up in any comments down below. And if you have any questions, I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't already, why not subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell sign and it will let you know the next time I bring a soaping or bath and body video. The next one will be another Christmas soap that I have been working on. And to all my subscribers, thank you so much for already subscribing to the channel and for supporting me on my journey. So until next week, have a great one. Bye.